Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi. Yes, Bitcoin original. You can buy these hoodies, of course, in our store on the bitcoinfamily.com. Guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about Bitcoin, blockchain, and life. I have four amazing Bitcoin charts. I have an amazing trading tip, beautiful travel advice, talking about the news because the SEC is really fighting decentralization and thus freedom. I'm going to really spend some time to that. Of course, answering a question and ending the video with an inspirational quote from this beautiful garden here in Spain at my parents and law guys. Let's jump into the charts first to show you exactly what is happening on this amazing Friday, sunny Friday here in Spain. Bam. The first chart for the day, guys, is this four hour chart. On this four hour chart, we can see that there was a buy signal, candles closing above the yellow stepping line, finally seeing some green here in the bottom, also the blue line above the white line, but the Bollinger Band is uh, not that wide, so this is a trade that could lead to a small profit, but not like a huge profit. The, do the dogs are starting to drink water. That's what you, why you hear the sound in the back, guys. Sorry for that. Uh, but um, when we break that resistance level that we can see here, that blue bar over there is between 70 and 73K. When we break that, that is when the next huge trade will happen. And of course, you can enter these trades and hope it will break that, but be prepared that we can also see some pullbacks towards these levels of that red area over here, uh, even around 63K, which is the huge uh, major, uh, massive area of support. But of course, the first area of support would be again at 69K again, 69. Amazing number. So short-term trading, there is volatility. This is amazing to trade. I'm still expecting a breakout to the top, but I will show you it in other charts. Also showing you something very interesting in one of the next charts. If we look at the daily chart, we can see, yes, um, we did retest that top of that li line there, that pennant uh, with the red candle. We went into the wick. We are going up again. This breakout, of course, can take days. This is a daily chart. Don't expect in one day to see miracles. Look at how these charts move. Look at the MACD, how they slowly go up and down, but also look at these moves over here from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, almost 11 days till we see the top. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days till the bottom. So these moves, are taking a couple of days. So this can take all the way up till like 10 days is always 16, 17, 18 April, maybe even to the halving before we explode even higher. MACD needs to turn green. Blue line needs to cross that white line. So let's jump into some way more interesting charts at the moment. This is the first chart showing you exactly what I was saying. These liquidation levels over there, 72K, huge liquidation level around 68k huge liquidation level what this means i will tell you later in the video because i want to go back to this because it's very important that you understand these liquidation levels but at the moment it is telling us this target if the price will reach that 72k a lot of people will be liquidated if we reach 66k to 67k a lot of people will be liquidated so always keep an eye on these liquidation heat maps Way more important is this Bitcoin 200 week moving average chart, realized price and RSI. The gray line is the two year realized price, the black line the two 200 week moving average and the dots are the Bitcoin price. Every dot is a month. We can see the dots turning orange at the moment, which means between 75 and 80 when it comes to the RSI. That's a very beautiful moment to see on the Bitcoin charts because if we look to the left, what happened after these yellow orange dots? Massive run, orange dot, massive run, orange yellow dot, massive run. We are just getting started. You can also see that we are just getting started because of the lines. Look, whenever these gray and black lines are close to each other, that's just after the bear market, they will start to take a distance from each other. That is the bull market. Close to each other, just after the bear market, distance bull market close to each other the bear market now they start to take a distance this is just the beginning of the bull market we are gonna see a couple of more red dots before we will see a top very interesting chart by plan b very interesting to see every time they come close they expand come close expand come close 
come close, sorry, expelled. Last shot for the day, this shot is showing you the ultimate battle between the exponential returns and the diminishing returns. Which one will it be? The gray line is the diminishing returns. The tops will be lower and lower, not be explosive as the previous top. So for example, here it was a huge run, here it was a smaller run, again a little bit smaller run, will it be again a little bit smaller run, and will we follow that gray line, that diminishing return model? Or will we just keep following the stock to flow model and see exponential returns? White line, exponential returns, gray line, diminishing returns. This stock to flow line here, that white line, that is around 500,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. So it is telling us that between 2024 halving and 2028, the average price of Bitcoin will be 500,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. In between, we can go above that line and we can come below that line and go above that line and come below that line, the average will be 500,000 per Bitcoin. That doesn't mean that this bull market between now and 2025, we will reach $500,000 per Bitcoin. It can also take a little bit longer that we go above that line and then come down below the line again to create an average price of $500,000 between 2024 and 2028. Please understand this model. Now, the thing that I want to tell you, a lot of people are asking me every day, should I buy Bitcoin now at 70K or 69 or 68K or should I wait till 60K or should I buy at 72K? It really doesn't matter. As long if you believe in Bitcoin and any of these growth models, exponential or diminishing returns, it doesn't matter. The exponential model tells us between now and 2028, in the next four years, we will see a Bitcoin price of 500,000 US dollar. If you buy a 60K or 70K, it really doesn't matter. If we would grow from 70K to 500,000 US dollar, do you think you would care about 10K less, that you bought Bitcoin 10K cheaper? I don't think so. If we believe the diminishing return model, it won't take four years till we reach 500K, but it will take eight years still reach 500k all the way to 2032 so it doesn't really matter it is just how fast you will become rich exponential growth you will become rich between now and 2028 the diminishing return line you will become rich between now and 2032 so or four years or eight years but any investment around that gray line around that 70k line at the moment is a good investment. You just need to be patient, either four years or eight years, but 70K will turn into 500K per Bitcoin. That's times seven almost. There is no bank that's gonna pay you that seven extra capital in the next eight years. There is no other asset that will give you a seven X return on your capital in the next eight years or some maybe even in your next four years. Please understand these models. Till now, Bitcoin always broke that white line. Every time it starts to touch that white line. Will we touch 500K? In my honest opinion, yes. Will it be between now and 2025? In my honest opinion, no. It will be in between now and 2028 that we will see a 500K Bitcoin price. And that is enough for me to know. Zoom out in Bitcoin, zoom in at life. Somebody really wants to be in the video here. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Look in the camera. Yes, good morning. <laughs> I hope you really enjoy those charts, guys. Those charts are telling us every time the same. Short term, still my target, 77K to 80K should be the play that we are going to play now with the Bitcoin price in the short term. So direct messaging me, Didi, should I buy now at uh, 70K or 68K or 65K? Uh, I won't answer and I won't be able to answer all those questions. It's too many questions. My answer is in my videos. I would be dollar cost averaging at these prices. I would be buying every Bitcoin dip because I believe that 80K, 90K, 100K, 110, 20, 30, 40K, 140K, sorry, not 40K, 140K, all our targets 
for Bitcoin in this bull market. So why would I be doubting about 70K or 71K or 68K? If Bitcoin goes to 140K, you will have a shitload of profit, more than 60K per Bitcoin. Do you really think that you care about that 1K cheaper, 2K cheaper or 3K or 5K cheaper that you bought Bitcoin? So 55K profit per Bitcoin or 60K per Bitcoin? I don't think you will give a fuck. I, will th I think you will be happy as fuck at the end of this bull market. So I would always be dollar cost averaging at these prices until the indicators tell us, hey, this could be a top of the market. Please pay attention. I made a reel yesterday on our Instagram about which indicators you should be paying attention to during this bull market. So yes, watch my reels on Instagram and YouTube as well. It's not cold in the morning, but it's also not like really warm yet. So it's, it's warming up really quickly. It's now like 9 a.m. So 10 a.m. mostly it's warm. Uh, the trading tip for today, guys, is the liquidation heat map. For example, this liquidation heat map over here from CoinGlass. On these liquidation heat maps, you can see exactly where people will be liquidated if the Bitcoin price goes to those levels. For example, now at the moment, 72K is a huge amount of people that will be liquidated. Also, when we look down on the chart, the yellow area, we can see there around 68K, a lot of people being liquidated. How is this possible? So these people are in a short trade. So they are guessing that Bitcoin will go down. But then when Bitcoin moves the other way up, we will reach 72K and that is when their stop loss will be hit, for example, and when they will be liquidated. Also the other way around. If people are in a long expecting Bitcoin to go to 77K, but the price goes the opposite direction to 68K, that is when it will hit their liquidations. Their positions will be closed and liquidated and that's why they call it a liquidation heat map. So always pay attention to these heat maps because they show you a beautiful level of support and resistance and where if we will be liquidated at 72k, the resistance is because when we get liquidated over there, the Bitcoin price will pull back a little bit before we continue. So you can look at these charts at four hour, weekly or whatever time frame you want. Check CoinGlass. No, I'm not being paid to shield CoinGlass. I don't even know if they have a paid subscription or whatever, but just check them if you want to know more about liquidation heat maps and many other charts as well. Coin Glass is one, Glassnode is one, Wubul from Willy Wu is one. There's many of these websites that give you extra data aside of, for example, TradingView. The Bitcoin travel tip for today has to do with all those people that experienced now their first bull market. So let's say you went all in. Let's say you sold your house, your cars, whatever you ever sold, and we went all into Bitcoin. Now, your first bull market you want to have an optimal result. So you want to multiply your capital as soon as possible. The way to do that is to travel with the Bitcoin waves. During the bear market, you will spend time in cheap countries, for example, Asia. When the bear market hits in 2026, please go and visit these countries where you don't spend too much of your Bitcoins during the bear market. When the bull market arrives, you will go back to the more expensive countries again, like Europe. Because if you do it like this, you will be spending the same amount of Bitcoins during the whole period of your life. In the bear market, you need to spend a little bit more Bitcoins, but because you travel to a cheap country, you still spend not that many Bitcoins. In the bull market, you can go to more expensive countries and you will again spend the same amount of Bitcoins because the Bitcoin price is higher, so you get more value for your Bitcoins. So the first cycle that you're living as a Bitcoin digital nomad, for example, is the most important cycle to multiply your capital, but you need to go with the flow of Bitcoin. Bitcoin high, you can go to a little bit more expensive countries. Bitcoin low, you go to the cheaper countries. And those cheaper countries don't make it bad because those countries mostly are the countries where you will have the most beautiful adventures as a family. So I prefer always to stay in these cheap countries. I love Thailand for that reason, because the quality of life for what I receive back of spending my Bitcoins is 10 times higher than the quality of life, for example, in Europe. In Thailand, if I spend like 2,000 euros a month, for example, just giving an example, I'm not saying that we spend that, I think we spend a little bit more as a family, but when you spend that, you get a Thai massage every day, you can order dinner, you never need to cook, your garden is being cleaned, you know, all that kinds of quality of life that gives you, gives you more time to enjoy life will be there in Thailand. 
In Europe, we need to cook ourselves because the restaurants are a little bit more expensive. For example, Thai massage is $8, here in Europe it's $50. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. When you're on Bitcoin for the first bull cycle, you need to adapt your lifestyle to the cycle of Bitcoin. Then there was a question of one of the followers. The question was, did he when a dollar cost average out in the bull cycle top into stable coins, for example, Tether, DAI or USDC, for example, what do I do? Do I take out my initial investment or do I keep the full capital in stable coins to buy back Bitcoin cheaper? That is all depending on what kind of investment you did. I can't look into your wallet, like for example, but like say, if you went all in with like 100K, and at that moment, you were able to cash out 600K, just to give an example. Of course, you could put that 100K aside back to your bank account or whatever idea you might have. I would never do that, but you could do that if you want to put back 100K into your bank account and have that um, undergo all the inflation rates. And you know, you, you won't be able to use that 100K the same way that you're using it now, like in 10 years time, probably you won't be able to buy the same amount of stuff as you're buying now. If you want that, of course, you can take your initials out, but that is an indication to me that you still don't understand finance, that you still don't understand fiat currencies and that you definitely still don't understand Bitcoin. Bitcoin should be your core capital. So why would you take everything out into the fiat currency system which will make it very difficult for you in the future to put it back into Bitcoin. We can see all what is going on. We can all see it. They want to do regulations, AML, KYC. Well, you, they ask you 10 thousands of questions when you want to put some Bitcoins into, for example, buy Tonic in the Netherlands or buy Bit for me internationally, guys. They will make it difficult. So why would you want to withdraw some of those funds, for example, into the fiat system. If you're talking about, no, I will leave them all in USDT, but like 100K USDT, I won't touch anymore. And the 500,000 USDT dollars that I made in profit, I will use to reinvest and buy Bitcoins. I think that is a good idea, but I would do it with the core full capital. So for me, when I exit the market at the top, there is no profit taken in stable coins for the long term, that is just a 12 month bear market term. So when I see this 12 month bear market start again, we will see a bottom. I will go fully back into Bitcoin, like 100% of the capital will flow back into Bitcoin. So for me, it's different. But for you, of course, if you want to take your initials out, and have that as a backup plan, a savings plan for if everything might collapse, that's never bad to take your initials out. But do understand that the initial that you're taking out will undergo inflation and will not give you the possibilities to buy what you think that you can buy in 10 years time. Bitcoin is deflationary, will give you more groceries every four year cycle. Fiat is inflationary, will give you less groceries every four year cycle, like every year, but let, let's count four year cycles now. So that's the answer to your question. The news for the day, the SEC issued a Wells notice to Uniswap. So the SEC again is uh, showing their control or their power. They want to grab the power. They want to grab control now in the DeFi space, decentralized finance. So decentralized protocols like Uniswap now also need to watch out for Mr. Gary Genser, that ugly person. Now, I don't think he will ever be able to win this case against Uniswap because Uniswap stated very clearly, hey, Mr. Gary Genser, you won't be able to do this because we just created the front of Uniswap. That's a decentralized exchange and we just created some software that people can use to use a different project and that's not ours, like that's the software. We just, the front end was made by us, the rest is just decentralized. So they will be able to stop the front end. You're not allowed to have a marketplace like they stopped Ross Ulbricht, but the technology they won't be able to stop. Decentralized exchanges will just be part of this industry. And Mr. Gary Gensler will never be able to stop these decentralized exchanges or that software that is up and running. That is why it's impossible for him to stop Bitcoin. It's decentralized. He can't knock a door and say you need to stop Bitcoin. It's impossible because it's decentralized. He can knock a door, for example, of a company that created the Bitcoin wallet. You are not allowed to operate in our country with your Bitcoin wallet or with your Bitcoin exchange. That is how far Gary Gensler's reach is. But he can never, he can never stop the technology. 
So these centralized exchanges will be unstoppable the moment that one is being created in the way like Bitcoin is being created. In an anonymous way, by an anonymous founder, by an anonymous team, and it doesn't have the intention to become famous. They just need to create something completely decentralized, set it free to the world in a decentralized way, and everyone will be able to use it without Gary Gensler being able to stop it. So for me, that is Apex Pro at the moment. I think Apex Pro is unstoppable. Uniswap also unstoppable. PancakeSwap also unstoppable. There is many of these. DRDEX is, for example, one of those protocols I invested in, also gonna be unstoppable. So Mr. Gary Gensler can shout as loud as he wants and cry like a little baby and whatever, pee in his panties, whatever he wants to do, he won't be able to stop decentralized protocols. That is why I'm supporting this decentralized revolution. We need to support this decentralizing of the world because that is the way we leave behind a more beautiful place for our children and the next generations. It's not going to be a beautiful future if we leave it to Gary Gensler and his WEF friends that want to have a centralized future with a social credit system tied to a central bank's digital currency and full control on their people, on their humans, on us. That is not the future we want for our children and that is why we collectively should be supporting decentralization full time. Bitcoin but also other decentralized protocols that make it possible for us to always swap Bitcoins to USDT, USDT to Bitcoin while being anonymous and having our full privacy. So. That was the news for today. Gary Gensler is making it himself again difficult and will be crying like a little baby in the far future because he won't be able to stop the decentralization of this world. And the last part of the video, guys, the inspirational part. Uh, today we are talking about a magnet. <laughs> a magnet? Ooh, what is that? A magnet. Yeah, a magnet. I think optimism is a happiness magnet. When you stay completely optimistic all the time, happy people, happy situations, positive situations will be drawn to you because people will love your optimistic view of life, of the world, of themselves, of our situations. Because optimism is a happiness magnet. Whenever you're optimistic, people will be drawn to you. They will love that energy. They will see something that they want to be as well. They all want to be happy. And they can see that you are vibing that happiness because you're optimistic, always optimistic. Whatever happens, whatever strange situations you run into, whatever difficulty you run into, whatever dip you will see in Bitcoin, stay optimistic. See it as a buying opportunity, not as an issue or a problem. It's an opportunity. Optimism is a happiness magnet. So whatever you do today, try to stay and be optimistic and see and observe what people around you will see and do about this. They will be drawn to optimistic people. They will also be inspired by your optimism. They will be like, wow, how can this guy still be optimistic in that bad situation? He must have a secret. The secret is that he is optimistic. And that will lead, of course, to happiness because you will see everything in life as something positive, as an opportunity. So it's very important that you understand that optimism is a happiness magnet. Short but very powerful life lesson for today. I need to keep it short because we're going to travel to our next location today. So tomorrow's video will again be with Seaview. That's the only thing I can tell you guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy this video, then give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about the tips? And what do you think about the life lesson for today? This weekend, yes, I will do some lives again. A live English AMA and a live Dutch. Amy. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing Friday. If you haven't seen the Bitcoin family, hashtag all in the Bitcoin family series yet on Amazon Prime, please watch it. Please watch it and share it with all your friends and family because we want to show that there is more to Bitcoin than the Lamborghini. It's all about life. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bam.